The title of the class is Love Mating in the Brain. And as you can imagine, uh, this is the type of course that generates a lot of discussions regarding a lot of topics that may have some controversy associated with it. The first one is uh, the brain and the idea that our brain is uh, at least partly responsible for the regulation of all forms of behavior. And that's something that can be thought provoking for a lot of students and in some ways also confusing. Um, many students come into UT uh, not, ha not having given much thought to the day-to-day -day activities that they do and the behaviors that they experience and what sorts of things are responsible for eating breakfast in the morning, uh, for falling in love, uh, for wanting to be in the presence of people you love and enjoy. Uh, and I think my class is one of the first classes where they are exposed to the idea that there is some biological mechanisms, uh, namely the brain, that is involved in some aspects of, of these things that they uh, call behavior. Uh, and so that, I think, is one of the first opportunities that I have to have the students think critically about the things that they would otherwise take for granted. And the way I do this is by providing them with substantiated information uh, based on research. And I ask them to explain to me how the, the material that they've learned about in class has informed their understanding of, of their own behaviors. Um, an example of this is actually uh, an exercise that we do where we take the students to the museum. Uh, we are lucky at UT that we, in that we have access to the Blanton Museum, which I think is, is really uh, one of the wonderful gems of our university. Uh, and in this trip to the museum, uh, the students are charged or asked to um, explore the museum and to find pieces of artwork that generate some sort of an emotional uh, response in them. So experiences that are associated with emotional salience. And I then ask them to apply uh, what they've learned in class. So this is an exercise that comes on board usually about two-thirds of the way through class. And I ask them to then apply what they've learned in class with respect to how the brain is involved in emotional responses, because there are emotional responses associated with things like love and mating, of course, and to help me understand how their own experiences in the museum in the presence of a piece of art is being regulated by their own biology. Uh, and this is, I think, an exercise that um, opens their eyes to thinking independently uh, and almost, almost in a way for the very first time about how their own emotions and their own feelings are being impacted by their biology. Uh, and they do this independently. In fact, I'm always very careful to not um, to not force their, their thinking uh, about much of this. I simply provide them with the information and ask them to, through their own experiences, explain how their biology is responsible for these experiences. And inevitably, uh, the outcome is almost always, in fact, I would say that it's always uh, an appreciation for how their brain is, is a large part of their emotional experiences. Um, very much in the same vein of, um, of critical thinking. Um, as, 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 again, as I said, you know, a class like ours is, is associated with some controversial topics. And so another task uh, or exercise that we, that we do in my class is to play devil's advocate. The students are asked to defend a point of view that is not of their own. The students um, are given a number of topics, one that is uh, almost always chosen and one that is almost always uh, of great interest is sexual preference. The idea that some of us, um, while the, you know, the majority of people are attracted to and interested in people of the opposite sex, there are some of us who are not, uh, that there are people who are attracted to same-sex partners. And by this time, I've provided the students with the, um, with the research and the science and the data supporting um, same-sex uh, preferences. Uh, but I asked them to choose a side uh, in, in this debate. Uh, the question is, is there a biological predisposition to sexual preference? Uh, and if there is, what do you think of this? How do you feel? What is your opinion of this? 
and I now want you to argue the opposite point of view. And in doing that, the students are required to integrate an understanding of information that supports their own point of view, but they must now also understand the information that supports the opposite point of view. Uh, and that really, I think, uh, generates some very interesting discussions uh, during the phase of the exercise where the students are tasked with presenting their arguments to the class. Uh, and ultimately, it, it, it is, in my opinion, the epitome of, of what critical thinking is. Uh, taking information uh, and not simply regurgitating that information, but applying it to your own beliefs and understanding of the world around you but also being able to integrate information that other people might see as important and that they may also use uh, in support of their own argument uh, so as to help you make your own arguments as well. And so I think that that is uh, in many ways um, a perfect example of an exercise that helps the students think critically about different points of views and the data that may be supporting those views.